we will show you the basics of working with cameras in Cognex Designer. I see that we have added a camera to the local network. The CIC10MR model series with this serial number. And since I already have it correctly configured, I should see it in the designer project. But of course, I have to open the project only after I have the camera configured. Otherwise I wouldn't have seen it here. And in the project it will be shown to us here. It will show the model range and the serial number, it should correspond. 277 is at the end so as is here. I delete these test devices so that they do not confuse us. And now I want to connect this camera to the designer so that I can use it in the program. I will give it a name Cam1. I see that the camera is also selected. The video format is selected for mono, that is, 8-bit grade depth. Here I can already run this tool via the run button. So I press once and I see that I have some image that I can manipulate. To see what changes are happening there, I move the part under the camera, but to see it in real time I can turn on the live display. So I turn on live display. Right click and choose fit image to see the whole picture on full screen. And I see that I have insufficient lighting there. So I light up a little bit and adjust the aperture on the camera. I can also sharpen it with the focus ring on the lens. Now it's better, so I have this test part here. It has two holes and it has some test inscriptions, a test laser print. And now we would like to be able to use this image in the program. And ideally, for example, save the image to disk. So, I'll go back to tasks. This is the old device, so I'll delete the one. But we'll put a new one there. And now when I give run all, I see that the device block ran with green status, that means without an error. And at the output I see some icon image. I also see some timestamp. I can run either the whole task using run all or just run selected or run from to end, depending on how I have the blocks selected. So for example, run selected would run this block. I see it took 135 milliseconds approximately, the whole task took 136 milliseconds. And now I would like to save this image to disk. For this I can use image recorder, which I pull from the toolbox. and it asks me for some file format string, then input image. This is the image we want to save, so I will connect it. And then the root directory, that is, the folder in which we would like to save those images, we can configure the inputs externally. That is, using some scripts or other blocks. But in this case, in the image recorder, we can also do it by double clicking on that tool block. And it will show us options. So recording destination will be local. We could also use FTP or both local and remote. We will only use local. We want it to be saved in BMP format. As it is without compression, no loss format and the best for vision applications of this type. Record mode can be asynchronous or synchronous. Asynchronous has the advantage that it saves the image without burdening the designer's process. So it creates a new thread on which it saves the image to disk and it does not take much time. But we have to take into account that the image does not have to be saved while the task continues with the execution. If we use synchronous mode, then as soon as it comes to this block, it starts saving the image and until it saves it. It does not leave that block. So, it can take 300 milliseconds for large images, depending on your hard drive and then the block can increase the execution time of this task. So, we usually use it asynchronously because usually there is no problem with that later in the program. 
and we can choose any file name. So, for example, moya underscore snimka. And this is a timestamp. I recommend leaving that timestamp somewhere in the image title so that we know which year it was saved, month, day, hour, minute, second and fraction of seconds. In this format, it saves its timestamp to disk. So we can easily search when the image was saved and we can look for any problems in the program accordingly. For the root directory, we choose the path to our image folder. I'll put the new images folder here, for example. Copy the path and paste it here. I'll give OK. And now when I hit run all, I see that the block lasted to 0.54 milliseconds, which is very quick. And this is because we put asynchronous mode. And we see that it saved the image to this location. Called Moya underscore Snimco with timestamp and we see that it has 10 megabytes. So we can look at that image. It looks like this. To show what else can be done with the timestamp, you can write some separators. For example, like this. Aha, so the colon must not be there, but theoretically, this is how it could look. I give run ALL. So I see that it saved the image again in this format already with delimiters. So, if this format does not suit you, you can use this one, but I will use this format. I'll delete this shot so it doesn't make a problems here if I happen to need to pull something out. So now I have a task in designer that pulls out a camera image and saves it to disk. If we want to see what the program will look like, when we run it on the line at the customer, we put F5 or this green arrow, run. And we see that first launch web browser that we are not interested in now. And we also have run mode here, where there is a page displayed. From here, from pages page, this one will interest us and therefore I will go back via F5 or stop and turn off the web server. So, system, settings, web HMI, enable web server, I will turn off, so that we always start the page at the beginning, that is, the page and not the web page, which we will not be interested in now. And on this page, we would like to display the picture that the camera took for us. We will use the Vision Pro display to display the image. The Vision Pro display will show what the camera has just taken. And when we launch run, we see that there is a Vision Pro display. But it is empty. It is pure blue. It has no image there. So we go back to the task and to link this camera. To this display on the site, we will use the tag, which we can create simply by right-clicking on the output from the device camera, and we click on assign to new tag. So we create a new tag. It will be a global variable. Tags are global variables in the designer. And it will be cam one image, for example. That will be the name of this global variable for us. Once we created this variable, we can see it in Tag Manager. We could have created it in Tag Manager too, but we have created it now in a simpler way. And it has its name here, its data type, Vision Pro Image. And basically, nothing more interests us now. On the page, we click on that Vision Pro display. And select the source, which is where to draw from and select it using these double arrows. And now either we can write $cam1 image because through dollar we access tags, that is, global variables, 
or we can go through this tag selector and choose this cam1 image and give accept when i give ok i see that the result there will be of type cognex vision pro dot cog image 8 gray and when i start run i can see that i already have a camera snapshot here but now i can't run that task here since i'm in run mode i can't do anything important not even launch the task. Nor I can take another camera image. Which I miss a bit because I only see one static image. So, let's do it by putting one button here that starts the task and thus pulls out the camera image. And saves it to disk. So I'll go back to page, put a button there, for example, here. and put the title there in a text field. Run once for example, and to click command I map the task. When I go here, according to this structure, so I go tasks, task and run. And I have the option run or run a sync. Now let's just give run. Then I'll explain later what it means. How we can take advantage of these two options. We choose run. And when I launch into run mode, I should now be able to see that my image changes every time I click run once. Well, so that is working. I'm going to rename the task. I'm going to give it name main task. If I rename it here through this rename, it should automatically be renamed elsewhere where it's used, for example, in this run once. I see that there is already task main task run, so I don't have to pay attention anymore whether I used it somewhere with that name or with another one. When I rename it, it should change. Unless, of course, I use this name hard-coded as a string or something else. We'll talk about that later. But at the same time, by running this whole task, we also save a snapshot. So when I have already run this task several times, I can see that I already have several images that have been stored here. And I don't always want to save those images. I only want to store them when, for example, I have a well-adjusted exposure, well-adjusted aperture, focus, lighting, and so on. So. It would be good to somehow run this block only when we want to. And that's what this condition is for. When the value of this condition is true, then this block is triggered, and when it is false, this block is set aside, it will not run. It will not have a green circle here, but a gray one after we would run the sequence. So let's do it. So, we can write condition right here, for example, false. False it is of the boolean type. And we see that this check mark has disappeared. And now when we run this task, this imager quarter does not run. It got a gray circle, that is. There is no runtime here either, that is, only the pulling out of the camera took place. And we can see this on the display. We can look and yes, the image is there. The image is there but they are no longer being saved. And I see that I only have 13 images here. This is because we have used the false value to stop this block from running. If we want to enable it again, I either delete false and give OK or I give true. It's the same thing. But, in order to do it dynamically, for example in program, it would be good to use, for example, checkbox. Checkbox. From the toolbox I dragged the checkbox. I'll expand its field a little. And write, save image, to its text field. I can enlarge its font. Let's give it 20 so I can see it better. But, we need to somehow link this checkbox to this block. And again, we do it using a tag, 
global variable. Only now we have to create it in the tag manager, because in the condition field it can't be done. So, we will write settings, save image from cam for example. This will be our tag that we will use to turn disk recording on and off. I wrote settings period, which means that I created something like a folder in which this variable will sit. Later, when I have a lot of tags and I want to use this tag, just write settings and it will show me a list of tags that have been written with the same prefix. The data type is of type boolean, that's fine. And the base value at startup will be false. This means that when launched, the checkbox will always be unchecked and will not record images. On the page, we now click on the checkbox and map its state. Using these two arrows, not using this checkbox now, because it would be hard coding the state, but we want to choose binding connection. And now, Using dollar sign, I write settings, sub image from I connect this checkbox state with this variable. So, if I check the checkbox, the variable changes to true. If I uncheck it, it changes to false. In main task, I click on image recorder and set its condition to dollar setting, save image from cam as well and give OK. And now when I run it, I can enlarge the display through F11 so we can see it better. I click Run once, without saving. I see that I still have 13 images in the folder, but when I check Save Image, and I give Run once, I see that I have a new image. There are 14 images now. So, when I clicking now, it is saving new images. I already have 21 of them there. And again I can turn off the recording and I click run once. And I see that there are still 21 of them. This means that I can now control the recording of images to disk. I said that the default value of that variable settings. Record images is false, that is, every time you start this program. This save image will not be checked, which may not always be required. We would like the program to react in such a way that when, for example, a programmer or a quality engineer or someone starts recording the images, then if the computer accidentally restarts, or the program is killed, or the line is restarted, so that those images are recorded all the time, until the quality engineer turns it off again. To achieve this, I go back to run mode via F11 but in reduce mode. I hit stop and go to tag manager where I find the variable, the tag. And I have the option to check persistent. If I check this persistent, the default value will be ignored. And there will always be a value depending on what the last value was stored in the tag when the program was closed or when the program crashed. This means that if I check save image and the program closes, or crashes in this state, I should have the save image checked when the program starts up again. This is the persistent setting option.